Hi guys! Today I'm reviewing the KitchenAid 6 quart Professional 600 Stand Mixer. The mixer is 16 and a half inches tall, 11 and a quarter inches wide, and 14 and a half inches deep. The cord length is about 45 inches long. It weighs 29 pounds, so you probably want to leave it on your countertop or find a spot for it. There are 30 colors to choose from. This is tangerine. It's a beautiful creamy orange. The unit is 575 watts and has 10 speeds. The stainless steel bowl has a handle and holds 6 quarts. Included is a burnished metal flat beater used for cakes, frosting and cookie dough, burnished spiral dough hook for bread and pizza dough, and a 6 wire whip for heavy cream and egg whites, a plastic pouring shield, and the instruction manual. The burnished metal flat beater and dough hook are hand wash only. If you put them in the dishwasher, they'll be discolored and ruined. All wire whips are stainless steel and they're hand wash only. The bowl is stainless steel and dishwasher safe. It would have been really nice if the attachments were plastic coated. This way you don't have to worry about discoloration or the extra cleaning. There's always going to be residue on here when you first get the unit. And these take more time to clean than plastic coated attachments. If you've watched my previous KitchenAid mixer reviews, I think you know what I'm going to say now and it's about the bowl. The bowl looks nice and shiny on the outside, it's stainless steel, it's pretty comfortable to hold. The problem is always on the inside. There's a lot of residue, the black stuff that comes off in your hand, if you do it with a paper towel, you'll see that there's a lot of residue coming off on it. This is really something that should be cleaned at the factory with an acid wash. I hope you can see all the dirt and the black residue on the paper towel. It's really disgusting. A lot of people save up for this KitchenAid and other KitchenAids, so it's really unfair of KitchenAid not to spend the extra little bit of money to do the acid wash at the factory so the customer doesn't have to come home and scrub clean this about three times to get all of this off. And if you don't do all that extra work, you're going to get black residue all over your whipped cream or your butter or your pizza dough. And that has happened to me and I know it's happened to many of you. I'll wash this bowl a few times and then test this KitchenAid. As you can see, this KitchenAid is not going to fit under my kitchen cabinets. And I don't think it'll fit under most kitchen cabinets because this is very tall. Although this mixer is tall, the head does not tilt up like other KitchenAid models. So you don't have to worry about the extra height of it tilting up. The paint and finishing overall on the KitchenAid is pretty decent, but there are a few chips like here, underneath the band all around here, and here the surface is very rough. It's not smooth at all, so there's still some quality control issues. Again, for a mixer at this price, there really should be no quality control issues. This is the bowl lift handle. To attach the bowl, leave the handle in the down position. The tabs on the side of the bowl go right over the pins and the middle part will fit right into this hole. Put the tabs over the pins and then put both hands on the back of the bowl and push it down. Take your attachment and slide it straight up the shaft and turn. It'll lock over the pin. Before using the mixer, just lift the handle and it'll lock. Now you can turn the machine on and use it. If you're using the pouring shield, just put it on the rim of the bowl and you can pour ingredients through the chute. The pouring shield is useful when whipping cream or adding flour. It'll keep the ingredients from splashing out of the bowl. It slides easily and you can position it anywhere. The pouring shield can be washed in warm soapy water or on the top rack of your dishwasher. After you're done mixing, just pull the handle down to remove the whisk, push it straight up, turn, and it'll slide out. To remove the bowl, hold the handle and pull straight up. Wipe the shaft and entire mixer down with a damp cloth and dry. Loosen the screw, flip up the attachment knob, and you can attach one of over 10 KitchenAid attachments. Back here is the bowl height adjustment screw. If any of your attachments are hitting the bottom of the bowl, Turn the screw slightly counterclockwise to raise and clockwise to lower the bowl. Before using, wash the beater, hook, and wire whip. And I always check to make sure there's no residue left in the bowl by wiping with a paper towel. I've washed the bowl a couple of times with a stainless steel scrubby. Attach the wire whip. Pull the handle up. 
Lock that. Pour in two cups of heavy cream. You want to move the speed gradually to eight. When you're mixing anything, always start at a low speed and go up slowly. On KitchenAid's website, there is a recipe book, and there's also some good tips regarding the correct speed to use for different ingredients. This unit sounds very loud. That took about three minutes. Looks good. And it looks like the beater did reach to the bottom. There's no unwhipped cream. And I don't see any black streaks, so I think the bowl was cleaned out pretty well. There's no unwhipped cream on the sides either. The bowl is six quarts, so it can handle a lot more whipped cream than this two cups. You can see how small the two cups of whipped cream look in this large bowl. Next, we'll make cookies. The maximum amount of cookies you can make with this unit is 13 dozen. For cookies, it's best to go up to speed four. Attach the flat beater. Pull the handle up. I'll add two sticks of softened butter. I'll add white sugar and brown sugar. Scrape down the sides. cream nicely. Now we'll add eggs one at a time. The eggs don't look like they're incorporating well. I think the bowl is so big and the paddle doesn't seem to want to pull the rest of the butter and sugar from the sides. So I'm just going to give it a mix. Could also be because I'm making a standard um, cookie batter with two cups of flour, two sticks of butter. Since this bowl is so big, it might do well with a double batch of cookies, just a larger batch. Now the eggs are incorporated into the butter and sugar. I'll add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I'll add the flour on stir speed and move up to two if I need to. Now I'll add my chocolate chips and toffee. Use stir speed. Put the handle down. So did a good job of making the cookie dough. Like I said, I think bigger batches would work better in the six quart bowl. Now we'll make white bread. Put a packet of yeast in the bowl, a little bit of milk. Leave that to dissolve for a few minutes. When the yeast is dissolved, add the rest of the milk, a little vinegar, salt and sugar, melted butter, and two eggs. The flat beater is already attached. I'll give this a mix, just on speed two. Now I'm gonna mix in five cups of flour on low speed. I'll take the flat beater off. The dough is coming off nicely from the flat beater and there's no unmixed dough on the bottom of the bowl. Attach the dough hook and I'll 
mix this on speed two for about 10 minutes. If the dough is sticky, I'll add a little bit more flour. The bowl is secure, but it does move around a little bit. It's been 10 minutes. The motor head is warm and that's normal. The dough comes off easily. Looks really good. Beautiful soft dough. This is gonna make great bread. I'll put this into my buttered bowl. Just roll it around, turn it over. Cover this, put it in a warm spot, and let it rise until doubled. When I used the flat beater, it just cleared the bottom of the bowl, and that's how it should be. But the dough hook has too much space between it and the bottom of the bowl, so I'll show you how to adjust it. I had to turn the screw counterclockwise all the way as far as it would go. So for the flat beater attachment, the screw is all the way to the right as far as you can go, and all the way to the left as far as you can go for the dough hook. Your mixture might be different depending on how it was adjusted at the factory. So you saw how this Professional 600 did on the whipped cream, cookie dough, and bread dough. The two cups of cream was whipped perfectly. With the cookie dough, I found it's best to use a larger batch. The bread dough was perfect. I used five cups of flour and the dough came out beautifully. The maximum amount of flour you can use in this unit is 13 to 14 cups or eight and a quarter loaves of bread. Cookies is 13 dozen and mashed potatoes is eight pounds. If you bake a lot of bread or just bake in general in larger quantities, then this mixture would work for you. If you want to try this KitchenAid out, I've put a link in the description below. As always, I hope you found this review helpful. Subscribe for more reviews and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.